Okay, now we're on to the negative indices. So have a look at our rule. So when you get a to the power of, of a negative index, say for example negative n, then see how we change this into something like this? We make it into a fraction, so we put this on the denominator by simply changing the sign to a positive. Okay, that's a new rule that you're going to be rem have to remember. And this is where a lot of students are getting confused because they don't know how to convert it to one to another. It gets confusing for them, so make sure you take a good eye on this one. So, what I, how I remember it, I see how a to the power of negative n is simply over 1, okay, if I put it as a fraction. Now, if I want to change it to a positive index, I simply move this thing down and then just change the sign, okay? So, that's how I remember it, and I'll explain how I use this in the next few questions. But this is the basic rule that you're going to be remembering for the next few questions. So the convention is that an expression should be written using positive indices. So we don't necessarily like having negative indices. So the question would often ask you, change everything to positive index. And this is what you should be doing. Okay, so have a look, write that down somewhere. And let's try some questions. Starting with 28. Express x to the power of negative 5 with positive indices. Well, if it's negative index, we simply move it down to the denominator and have 1 over x to the power of positive 5. So we move it down to the denominator and simply change the sign to positive. Okay, so it's very, very easy. 29, again, same thing. y has the power of negative 4, so if I want the positive um, index, I should move it down to the denominator and change the sign to positive 4. Okay, so positive is what we have now. 30, okay, so see how 4 on 5 times a to the power of negative 3, that's the same thing as 4 like that, isn't it? Yeah, so if the a to the power of something is with the fraction, just like that, it's simply, we multiply it to the numerator only, don't we? So that's the same thing as that. Basically, a to the power of negative 3 is on the numerator. But see how it's negative index? So what, we'll, what we're going to be doing is move it down to the denominator. So now a is with 5 on the denominator. And we make the power positive. So a has a power of positive 3 now. Okay, so all, it, all I did is just bring it down to the denominator and change the sign. That was question 30. Now 31, okay, with positive indices. Now, the only negative index that we have is for y, isn't it? y has a power of negative 3, which is the negative one. So I've got to convert that one into a positive index. So all I need to do is leave the others. So don't worry about the others because it's all positive index. And all you need to do for this is move it down to the denominator and change the sign to positive. So see how now y is on the denominator with a power of positive 3. Okay, and see how I left 3x squared on the top as it is? Yeah? And, and a lot of people just changed, moved the whole thing down, which is not good. Make sure you can identify which one is, has the negative index. Okay, so that was question 31. 32. Okay, check. Which ones have the negative index? B and C have negative indices. So simply move those down to the denominator. So 6a cubed remains on the numerator, and b to the power of negative 1 becomes b to the power of positive 1, which is just b. And then c to the power of negative 5, we change the sign, so it becomes c to the power of positive 5. Okay, so that's all that you have to do. 33, this time we have the term on the denominator, but see how the denominator we have negative index. So what do we do? And don't put that again on the denominator. Don't think like that. This is where I'm going to introduce my method of remembering this stuff. A to the power of negative 6. Denominator can have a negative index. Okay, It's not always going to have a positive index on denominator. So what I do now is I simply move this up to the numerator and then change the sign of the index. So it becomes 6 to the power of positive 6 over, well this is basically over 1, isn't it? Because I move this up, the denominator is left as 1, but we don't write like that, do we? So we just leave it like this. Okay, so if you see a negative index on the denominator, just move it up and change the sign. 
If you see a negative index on the numerator, move it down to the denominator and then change the sign. Okay, that's all you need to remember. Okay, if you remember it like that, it's really easy. That's 33. 34. Okay, we're dividing. Have a look. 6 over 3, we can divide that, can't we? And B has a negative index, so what are we going to do? Well, 6 divided by 3 is 2. A has a positive index, so leave it as it is. And B is negative, so move it up to the numerator. So I have B to the power of positive 2. And on the denominator, we have nothing left. We just have 1 left, so we don't have to put it as a denominator anyway. Okay, so we just have 2AB squared. So see how that works? 35, okay, have a look at this guys. Well, 2 doesn't divide into 7, so we won't worry about the coefficients. But have a look. This one is negative index, so we're going to bring it down to the denominator. Okay, now have a look at this one. This one also has a negative index, which is on the denominator. So we simply move it up to the numerator and change the sign. So we're actually going to swap the two terms, but simply change the sign to all positive, just like this. So 7 and 2 remains as it is because it doesn't divide out. And on the numerator, now we have b to the power of positive 3. And on the denominator, we have a to the power of positive 4. So we simply swapped b and a to make it into positive index. Okay, that was question 35. 36. Okay, simplify them. So we want them to have positive index, but before we do anything, I actually want to simplify this by gathering my a's together and my b's together. Okay, because we're multiplying, we must add the indices, just like this. So it's going to be a to the power of 3 plus minus 5, plus minus makes minus, so 3 minus 5 is what's going to be the power of a. And then b, negative 2 plus, because it's multiplying, we add the indices, so negative 2 plus minus 1. And again, plus minus makes negative, so it's going to be negative 2 minus 1. That's the power of b. To simplify that first, so 3 minus 5 is negative 2, and negative 2 minus 1 is negative 3. We still have negative indices, so we're going to change that. Now see how a square a to the power of negative 2 and b to the power of negative 3, that's on 1, isn't it? If you really want to write the denominator, it's going to be over 1. Both is negative, so bring both down to the denominator, like that, and make it into positive indices. So, it's going to be 1 over a squared b cubed. Okay, see how they've changed all the signs to positive? 37. Okay, so again, we're dividing this time, so... We're going to gather our a's together and b's together, but this time we subtract the indices because we're dividing. So 4 leaves as it, leave, leave it as it is, a to the power of 3 minus 5 and b to the power of 2 minus 7. Make sure you're minusing. And simplify, that's what you should get. And see how we have negative indices for a and b? Just move it down to the denominator, just like that. So a and b have both positive indices now. Alright, so I hope you're getting the pattern now. It's very, very repetitive. Question 38. We have something like this. Remember, if I have a power of something like this, like that, in, inside the bracket, you must power that to every single term inside the brackets. So I'm going to do that first. So it's going to be 2 to the power of negative 5. A to the power of 3 times negative 3. Remember, we multiply the powers together. So 3 times negative 5 and m to the power of 4 times negative 5. Just simplify that, okay? I simplified these and these, and what I did here was, well, 2 to the power of negative 5, 2 has a power of negative 5. I don't want negative indices, so I changed that like this. I moved the 2 to the power of negative 5 to the denominator, and now I can convert it to a positive 5. And 2 to the power of 5, is 32, so that's why I made it 1 over 32, okay? And then now we still have negative indices. So what we're going to do for both of them, bring it down to the denominator and make them positive indices, okay? That's all you need to do. Have a look. 
39, okay, again we have brackets and we've got a power, so you must power it to every single term inside the brackets, so you don't have to worry about 4. So it's going to be like this, 4 times p to the power of 7 times negative 2, and then q to the power of negative 4 times negative 2, okay, and just simplify it. I've simplified the powers together, and then see how p has still negative indices, index, sorry? Q has a positive index, so I don't have to worry about that. But because P has negative index, I'm going to move it down to the denominator, and it becomes P to the power of positive 14. And see how 4 and Q to the power of 8 remains as it is on the numerator? So you leave it as it is, and only change what has a negative index. Question 40. Okay, again, I'm going to simplify the power first. So see how we have a power of negative 3? Power it to every single term. Just like that. So I have 2 to the power of negative 3, p to the power of 2 times negative 3, 3 to the power of negative 3, q to the power of 3 times negative 3. And just simplify it. And look what I did guys. Well here I simply simplified this one. So 2 times negative 3 is negative 6 and 3 times negative 3 is negative 9. But look what I did here. See how 2 has a power of negative 3? So I'm going to bring that down to the denominator and make it into a positive index. But see how 3 to the power of negative 3 also has negative index, which is on the denominator. So I'm going to move that up and put it on the numerator and change it to positive index. So basically I'm swapping the 2 and 3. So the 2 is now on the denominator and 3 is now on the numerator. But all I did was change the signs to positive. Okay. Now, I've got to change these two because they're still negative. So what I'll do is, because this is negative, I'll move it down. Because this is also negative, I'll move it up and change my signs, just like that. So 3 cubed is 27, and then it becomes q to the power of positive 9, so q goes on top. And 2 cubed is 8, and then p to the power of negative 6 goes down, so it becomes p to the power of positive 6. So again, I change the q and p. So have a look. You've got to be a little bit more careful with this kind of question. Okay, that was the 40. 41. Again, let's do our usual thing. Let's get rid of all the brackets first by simplifying. Again, negative 4 times 2. 2 to the power of 2. And then b to the power of negative 3 times 2. Simplify it. This becomes negative 8. This becomes negative 6. And 2 squared is 4. And see how again A and B still have negative index, so I'm going to bring this one down and this one up and change it into positive index. So now B is on the numerator, but it has positive 6 as a power, 4, leave it as it is, and A has a power of positive 8. So all I'm doing is moving it up and down depending on the index. Question 42, okay, evaluate this without using your calculator. So what I'm going to do is have a look. See how it's negative index? So I'm going to change it by moving it to the denominator. So what I did here was see how this is negative index, so I must change it to, I must move it down to the denominator and make it into positive index, so positive 3, and you should know that 2 cubed is 8. So I, all, I, all I'm doing is make it 1 over 8. Okay, it's very, very simple. You don't need a calculator for this. 43, okay, again, is without using a calculator. It's 6 to the power of negative 2, so move it down to the denominator, and it becomes 1 over 36. Because, see how this becomes 1 over 6 to the power of positive 2 by moving it down to the denominator. 6 squared is simply 36. Okay, so again, you don't need a calculator at all. 44, okay, let's simplify. You know that 16 to the power of 0 is 1. 2 to the power of 4, I don't have to change anything with that because it's positive index. 8 squared, I'm going to leave it on the denominator because it's positive index. But have a look guys, this one is negative index, so I must move it up to the numerator and make it into positive index of 4, positive 4. And just simplify it, you should get, see how 1, don't worry about the 1, but see how 2 and 2 have the same base? And all we need, because we're multiplying, we should add the indices. So we have 2 to the power of 8. Yeah, that's what I did. 
and then if you calculate this to the power of 8, you should kind of be able to know that it's 256 and you know, should know 8 squared is 64 and then to simplify it, okay, if 256 divided by 64 is 4. So maybe with this one you might have to do a little bit of calculation with your hand but you can do this stuff. Yeah, so see how easy that was? So the answer is simply 4. That's 44. Okay, again, we're going to start by simplifying. So, 5 cubed is still positive index, so leave it as it is. 25 to the power of 0 is 1. 25 squared is positive index, so leave it as it is on the denominator. And now see how this one is negative index? So we're going to move it up to the numerator and make it 5 to the power of positive 4. And see how 5 and 5 is the same base and we're multiplying so we can add the two indices 3 and 4 together to make 7. Now have a look here guys 25 squared, I don't know, I don't like simplifying these big numbers I don't like having big numbers so what I'm going to do is see how 25 is 5 squared so I'm going to replace 25 with 5 squared so it's going to be 5 squared to the power of 2 right and here we multiply the two indices together like that right so it's going to be 5 to the power of 4 okay so see now I have the same base 5 and 5 and we're dividing so I can simply subtract my indices so I have 5 to the power of 7 minus 4 which is 3 which simply makes 125 okay so that's all you need to do so if you don't like bigger numbers like I do Try to use this alternative method like this and it gets much easier to eliminate and simplify. Okay, so that was question 45.